is this? Tabletop Island. Let's see what this is all about. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host, and today we are finally finishing off my top 50 vintage board games of all time. We're now in the top 10, and man, am I excited. So I do want to start off by talking about some honorable mentions. There were some games that I do own that didn't quite make this list because I haven't gotten them to the table. We have popular games such as King Oil. We have the McDonald's game. I have a bunch of Japanese games I've been translating uh, and a few others that just could have made this list. Maybe even the Vanilla Ice board game will get there one day. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> but that game is just absolutely silly. But I want to get the right group of people together to play a game like that. And a, a few others that I just own that I, I feel like I just need to give a fair amount of plays before I start to add them to my list. Because they are just games that I feel like could be on this list easily. It's just a matter of getting them to the table. But I'm blabbering a little bit here. So let's start with number 10, Horror House. I love this game. I'm a huge horror movie fan. If you weren't familiar, take a look at my October um, time because we have a whole lot of fun doing those types of reviews and horror themed board games. But this one is amazingly unique. It has this amazing art on the board, just this really cartoony painted look. I absolutely love it. It's really dark themed. So are the cards and it has this electronic death head in the middle of the board, which has a record player in it. Yeah, I do love me some record player games, but you take this um, sword or depending on which one you have, the Bandai version actually has a crucifix. I do prefer that one. I'll have a video comparing the two soon because there's quite a bit of some difference and I do prefer the Bandai over this one, but that one I own is in Japanese, so I wanted to show off this cover. I'm talking too much. <laughs> but you push the sword into the death head's mouth whenever you're fighting a monster and it can make some sounds, whether it's a scream, whether it's some dropping swords or if it's a laugh and that laugh is not a good sign the game is haunting creepy and i absolutely love it it does everything i want in a horror board game although it does last on the longer side which is why it kind of remains here in slot number 10 but the more i play it over time the more i'll have more and more appreciation for it but number 10 horror house and i'll have a link in the description so you can check out my review if you're interested in some more information on it number nine the slime monster game by mattel Oh man, you guys know I love slime games and this is the best of the best and this is the highest slime um, board game that I have on any list that I own and I just love this game and I, I even furthermore I've created alternative handlings and alternative gameplay modes for this game. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check those out as well but essentially you're moving your places from start to finish and when you end up getting to the armory you get these kind of landmine pieces where you destroy the monster. Now this monster is this gigantic slime monster who's oozing slime from its mouth. And as it passes you, it could knock you down with its own slime, meaning it sends you back to the high school where hopefully you'll learn your lesson. <laughs> Still one of my favorite lines that I've done in a review. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out if you're interested in learning more about this game. But number nine, the slime monster game. Number eight chicken run chicken pot pie game my only question for you vintage board game collectors is why don't you own this game yet this is my favorite play-doh game to date and it, i don't think there's really any vintage play-doh board games that'll surpass this one i absolutely love the game and honestly i'm not the biggest fan of the movie very impressive wasn't my favorite movie of all time and it doesn't have to be for you to enjoy this game essentially you get these molds of chickens which look real sassy we do like that and you move from start to finish and if you are the first to get both of your chickens to chicken paradise you win the game now one of the funny elements is a lot like these play-doh board games you smash them this one when you smash the chickens they turn into what looks like a little pie chicken pot pie yeah they went there <laughs> so you're moving through and my favorite part in this so you have a few different elements you got protection elements you even have a cannon yes that's right a cannon that shoots play-doh chickens to try to get to the flying machine to get that one out early now while that sounds easy and the method to go Play-Doh has elasticity property, which will allow it to bounce. And man, that thing is hard, but it is so exciting and so disappointing when you watch your opponent actually land it or exciting when you land yourself. <laughs> but this game is awesome. If you want to own a Play-Doh game and you find a good deal on this one, this is the one to own. Look no further, everyone. <laughs> 
chicken run chicken pot pie game and i'll have a link in the description so you can take a look at my review if you're interested in some more details number seven lost valley of the dinosaurs another waddington's one and it's the one that sits the highest this game is absolutely gorgeous on the table it has this amazing detailed artwork and this 3d volcano it has these lava pieces that come out which just look gorgeous it has these actual toy like dinosaurs uh you have a t-rex that likes to wear lipstick looks pretty on them <laughs> what am i talking <laughs> you have a pterodactyl um, that comes down and can pick individuals up, which can help you, but also hurt your opponent. Because if you lift them up, it can allow them to drop their coin so you can try to get it. That's right. Your goal is to get coin and bring it back to your starting location or your village, whatever you like to call it. But the game is gorgeous. The structure of the game is just absolutely amazing. It looks beautiful on the table and it is the highest ranked Waddington's game for that very reason. And again, if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description if you want more details to my review. Number six, Mall Madness. Yeah, that's right. We like going to the mall, guys. This game is hilarious, awesome, and one of the coolest electronic board games that I own. It is a very enjoyable game, and I know it may surprise you due to the theme being highly geared towards girls at the time of the 80s. While I do prefer the 80s version, I am aware they did do a 2020 reprint, and it might honestly be just as fun. And it, as long as it follows anything close to the rules of this game you'll have a great time it has this amazing 3d board of a mall and you're moving around to try to catch a sale once you get a certain select amount of items depending on the game kind of length that you choose to play the goal is to get back to the parking lot first one to do so wins and man is there a lot of ways to screw over your opponent like hey i see you're about to win the game but let's go and get some ice cream how about it on the other side of the mall from the parking lot <laughs> This game is absolutely hilarious, awesome, and a blast. Everyone that gets this game to the table absolutely enjoys it. Mall Madness, number six. Number five, Voice of the Mummy. This is my favorite record player board game, and the theme is awesome. The components I do love. It has this really nice kind of pharaoh tomb in the middle that has the record player built inside of it you turn the dial on the side and it ends up playing different kind of things that can affect you in the game such as grabbing a jewel in the first half of the game which is super exciting because you only get to turn it when you land on those spots then once you end up getting the great jewel and that also gives you the spell the goal is to get to the end point without having the spell and only having the great jewel the player to do so wins now when you turn over the record to the second side of the game that's where it's more ruthless and the game gets crazy where you just start giving jewels away for free yeah this game is awesome the only thing i would change is probably the stand ease but judging by the age i can't complain the more i get this game to the table the more it ends up moving and climbing up onto my list because the experience is unmatched if you can get this game for a good deal I, I'll tell you what, I think it's a staple in vintage board gaming collections. And if you take a look on eBay, my buddy Richard does restorations on these and he absolutely makes them sounding perfect and really kind of keeps everything together that you want with the vintage side of things without doing too much. Um, I'll leave a link in the description where you can check out his stuff and also a link so you can check out my review if you're interested in some more information. Number four, Electronic Mystery mansion remember i told you guys if i got this one to the table i would it would 100 percent make my list i said that on match channel way before i got this game and or i should say got it to the table and man am i so happy i did get this to the table because it's an excellent addition in fact probably my favorite mystery game even through all of the clues that exist in the vintage realm which is another game that didn't make the list because i didn't play it museum caper i'm pretty confident that will also make the list but we're rambling in this game you have this mansion board which can change each time you have this kind of planner electronic planner which keeps track of the game and it makes it so it changes each time you play it so essentially you're going through the mansion to find the million dollars and as you're moving through the mansion in each room, you start to fill it up with the items it tells you to, which means it can tell you different items each time you play. So each room will always look different, making the replayability on this 
absolutely insane. And what you're doing is you're looking through each item, looking at the number on the item itself and putting it into the kind of planner piece. And while you're doing so, you are essentially trying to utilize those clues you get to find the million dollars before your opponent. First player to do so wins. This game is awesome. The components look fantastic. And to be honest with you, for the age of this game, I'm very impressed the electronics can do so much. Oh man, Electronic Mystery Mansion, if you can find a good deal, I highly recommend adding it to your collection. Number three, Tower of the Wizard King. Oh man, when I first saw what the component did on this game, I was blown away. You have this amazing 3D looking board and the best part is the tower. When you place one of your characters into the tower, you can pull the lever and it will change it into another character by the wizard's magic. Definitely magic. <laughs> this game looks gorgeous. The fighting system is equivalent to Risk. I love everything about this game. You're essentially trying to claim the most area um, kind of pendants onto um, the land and the person who claims the most land when the wizard gets to the top of the castle is the winner. And man, this game is awesome. And my review is pretty hilarious. Yeah, and I'll leave that in the description so you can take a look at it if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this game. But number three, Tower of the Wizard King. Number two, Omega Virus. This one is really fighting for the top slot. And honestly, it's so hard to decide between this and my number one. But this one, it just, it wasn't quite the experience I had. But this game is amazing. Don't think because it's second best means you shouldn't own it. Because if you can get a good deal, and it's honestly not as expensive as it probably should be in comparison to some of these others on my list and other people's lists. But Omega Virus is this electronic board game. It is kind of 3D-ish, and it looks amazing. The art design is just phenomenal. And you have this electronic piece in the board in the center that keeps track of everything what for something at this time that's beyond its time it's absolutely amazing and a marvel and electronics from where i stand but i know nothing <laughs> but this game looks amazing it has this element in the middle that taunts you the entire time and will completely frustrate you to go there or there it's not that hard five minutes till i destroy bro can you shut up you see i'm tracking here yeah i went there but I'll let you guys take a look further in my review. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. But Omega Virus, don't sleep on this one. Number one, Tornado Rex. If you guys know me, you knew this was coming. Number one stayed the same, even with Matt Wilkins channel, number two and number one. This game just can't be beat, and it is my all-time favorite for that very reason. In fact, soon when I begin my podcast, episode number two, we'll actually talk about uh, the real reason why this is my favorite vintage board game. And I'll tell you a little bit about it is I played this game for 24 hours straight. Yeah, there's a sad story there, but you'll understand a little bit more soon but this game i just love every single time i get someone to play this game they just absolutely fall in love with it it is crazy expensive and i don't recommend you paying that crazy high price but if you get a good deal look out for this one you have this 3d board this 3d mountain and you have these explorers that you're trying to get to the top of the mountain with both of your player pawns first while you're doing so you're drawing cards like Candyland, or if you got the weird version you got a spinner try to make a spinner not cool don't like it definitely get the one with the cards if you can or try to print them out I, I really don't know what to tell you but the spinner not a good look at least from where I stand some people enjoy it so I mean the gameplay is still relatively the same. You are drawing the move or spinning the move and you're trying to get to the top of the mountain. However, there is one element there where it shows the Tasmanian Devil on it or Tornado Rex. When you push the top button onto the mountain, it spins down like a top and if it knocks you down, you go back to start. And yes, it will get you and it is so impressive seeing the different areas that thing can go. The physics on this alone is just phenomenal. How it can just follow the path down the mountain so effectively even with the split down the middle where it has two sections completely amazing to me and just the comedic element of that piece getting hit and just flicking across the room is the funniest thing in the world especially if it shoots at your face because it's tornado rex <laughs> Oh man, I, thank you guys for joining me on this um, top 50 journey vintage board games of all time. 
let me know in the description what is your favorite or top 10 or just favorite vintage games that you love or even ones that you think I missed on adding to this list that you think I would highly enjoy. Maybe I don't know about them or maybe I just haven't played them or maybe I actually just don't really like them that much, which I'll do a review on some of the other top rated ones too that'll come soon you'll be pretty surprised some of the differences i have in opinions on some of them but i'll be concise and critical but that's honestly all i have for you guys today again i want to hear what you guys like but i hope you enjoyed my list let me know what you enjoyed about watching this series and if you'd like to see more i would be open to it because coming up next is going to be my top list of all time for regular board games this is going to be great, <laughs> but that's honestly all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Me and Volcar really appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, Volcar and I greatly appreciate it, and it would really help us out if you like, comment, subscribe on this video. And if you're interested, hit that bell icon because that'll let you know when we release our newest video. Monday is going to be our regular board game reviews. Wednesday, our weekly update slash talks. And then on Friday is my vintage board game reviews. That is all I have for you guys today. I will see you guys next time. <laughs> uh, uh, well, apparently the video doesn't end until Volcar says it ends. So <laughs> I guess we wait. <sighs>